Alright, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory. Be to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Kakodash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And um, Shalom, blessings to the sincere members of the hopeful elect out there listening and learning. You know, and also teaching this word in all sincerity and truth in the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai. <coughs> Excuse me, Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And, um, you know, um, it's pretty early in the morning. And um, I was waking up and I was just thinking about, you know, certain scriptures, you know, um, that serve to uh, wash the whole word serves to comfort us, but you know there's certain scriptures that stand out um, directly on the on the path, you know of um, you know easing our anxieties in this walk and the stresses that we got to deal with, being that we're you know in these fleshly bodies, and sometimes we um, we get plagued in the flesh, whether it be ailments or even in the mind, you know, certain demons and, or levels of fatigue, all of a sudden you just get hit with like super, you know, bouts of tiredness, and, you know, which could be also linked to diet and, um, and certain um, um, things as well. That's why we take the herbs and we pray, you know, to activate those herbs that the Lord, you know, heals us. Um, <clears throat> But um, but pretty much what I wanted to focus on is the sacrifice that we're making, you know. Um, and in fact, the first scripture that I'm going to read is in Romans 12 and 1. All right, and in fact, the sacrifice that we're making indeed is a sacrifice of the flesh um, in order that we may gain immortality, man. Um, and it takes, you know, you growing in the spirit and sacrificing the flesh in order to strive forward to the goal of being changed when Yahweh Shai comes back because that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to change us, you know, from these mortal bodies and he's going to give us <clears throat> bodies that are going to be immortal, you know, like extraterrestrial bodies, man. And if you don't believe, you know, things of that nature, you know, the mysteries of the scriptures, if you can't understand it, then, hey, the Lord's just not dealing with you, man. And, um, you know, because in order to get down with this truth, you know, you can't have a carnal mind. You know, you have to be spiritual. You know, the scriptures speak about faith being mixed with the word in Hebrews 4 and 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Okay? So this truth, you know, it takes, um, you know, it takes faith to activate, you know, the belief in these words that, you, that you're reading, you know, in the scriptures. So this is Romans 12 and 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, <clears throat> holy, acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. So, you know, this is our reasonable service, and it's beautiful because this precept ties perfectly into the lesson that I'm going into, you know, this morning. Um, but the point is, you know, um, you know, We've got to present our bodies a living sacrifice, man. All right. Now, let me go into that word sacrifice. Let's see what we can pull from that word. As the apostles, you know, they always um, encourage us to go into the meaning of words. Okay. The word sacrifice is thysia. All right. It says a sacrifice, victim. Let's go into the root word. Thio or thu. Sacrifice, immolate, to slay, kill. Of the pas uh, Paschal Lamb slaughter and Yahweh Shai, you know, um, you know Yahweh Shai, um, he was the Lamb that was slain, you know, for our sins, and he offered himself up the perfect sacrifice, you know, for the sins of the nation, you know, uh, namely, you know, firstly for the children of Israel, you know, the um, of the elect, you know, because you got the wicked of our people that don't recognize. Um, the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made, and Yahweh Shai, you know, he was um, he was slain. All right, the scriptures speak about, 
the lamb that stood before the throne as it had been slain in Revelation, the fifth chapter. That's talking about, you know, Yahweh Shai. So when we go through, you know, the sacrifice of our flesh, just think about what Yahweh Shai sacrificed, you know. And the scripture says, you know, he's the author and finisher of our faith. Let me get that scripture in, um, should be Hebrews. Hebrews keeps coming up. All right, Hebrews chapter 12. Um, Verse 2, it says, Looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith. All right, so yeah, if you say you have faith, but then look at who who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay, Yahweh Shai already accomplished that mission. Like we're just, you know, we're following after his example, you know, to the best of our ability, you know. So Yahweh Shai, he's, lead, he's leading the way, you know, he's leading the pack. Like, you know, you might have a pack of wolves and you got the wall and one at the front leading the pack. That's that's your how shy, man. He's he's leading the pack. You know? And he's up front. He's like, look, this is the way I know, you know. You know? Walk ye in it. And and the scripture says that no man can come to the Father but by Yahweh Shai. So, you know, it takes us to um, you know, that actually takes a uh, a sacrifice of fleshly pride or flesh fleshful pride. You know, in order to follow in itself, you know, because everyone wants to be a leader. Everyone wants to be the top guy. Everyone wants to exalt themselves. But what about exalting Yahweh Shai? Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. What about following after a man? <laughs> you know, Yahweh Shai has already got that top spot. You know, the order is Yahweh, then Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai, man, he's leading, he's leading the pack for us. We got to follow after his example. So, you know, it's, it's futile for you to be out there beating your chest you know, like, you know, the top of, top of a building on, like, King Kong. You're beating your chest, exalting yourself. Nah, man, like, <laughs> exalt Yahweh Shai. Exalt Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. Because he is the author and finisher of our faith, man. All right? In fact, let's look up the, let's look up the word author. Let me see, let me see what goes into this. Uh, Archegos, or Archegos. It's the chief leader, look at that, prince of the anointed. One that takes the lead in anything. Look at that. Imagine that. That goes into that, going to taking the lead. So that's that's right on the money, man. That's the spirit, man. You see how the spirit works. I ain't going into this word before. <clears throat> it says, well, listen, I don't remember going into this word before, but that's the spirit. One that takes the lead in anything. And thus affords an example, okay, a predecessor in a matter, a pioneer. All right, Yahweh Shai is a pioneer, man. Let's look up the word pioneer. A person who is among the first to explore or settle a new country or area. You see, that's Yahweh Shai. He's already gone and explored and he's pioneered this endeavor that we're, that we're embarked upon. You know, this, or this journey that we're on, that we're involved in. You know, Yahweh Shai, he's the first to explore that. He's the first to <clears throat> to go and, 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 and you know, and, and basically finish the, the walk of faith, if you will. You know? And like I said, you read in Revelation, the fifth chapter, he was worthy. He came to the Lamb, stood at it as it had been slain. He was worthy to open the seals, which was, you know, set up to give us that complete understanding. All right. So this is a beautiful thing. You see, where, you know, but that's but that came that came at a great cost. That that came at a cost of Yahweh Shai literally sacrificing himself. Okay. <clears throat> it says develop, and let's not forget Yahweh Shai didn't sin once. All right, when he came back as Yahweh Shai, he did not sin once. So he was a perfect sacrificial lamb, and not one of us out here can say that we're perfect, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like like we ain't never sinned. You know, the scripture says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. So that, hey, so where is boasting then? Why are you proud? <clears throat> you know? Because the thing is, you just off the bat, by default, you can never be on that level <laughs> of Yahweh Shai. Because he's like, you know, he's, 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 his record is clean. Perfect, you know? It says to develop or be the first. So we're still going into this word pioneer. All right? It says to develop or be the first to use or apply. A new method, area of knowledge or activity. You know what? See, my, even my um, my alarm had to go off on that. Um, area of knowledge. Let me go into um, 
Revelation 5. Alright. Um, right, let me start from verse 1. Revelation 5 and 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book. Alright. Written within on the backside and sealed with seven seals. Meaning what? The, the book was sealed. The understanding. Okay. Seven represents completion by the way. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book, meaning what? The scriptures. <clears throat> and to loose the seals thereof. All right. Who's able to pioneer this, basically, you know? I'm going to start using that word now. Pioneer. Yahweh Shai is the pioneer. <laughs> oh, man. See, I'm getting excited just thinking about this. You see, but you see, you have to be um, spiritual to understand the gravity of what's being said. The sacrifice and the walk that Yahweh Shai you know, walk and Yahweh Shai, <clears throat> he's coming back. Remember, prophecy states that Yahweh Shai is going to come back and establish his kingdom on the earth. All right, even now, he's going to pioneer that too. Because remember, by, you know, it's going to be Yahweh Shai's kingdom on the earth. And by default, we're going to be joint heirs with him. So Yahweh Shai is going to pioneer that, a kingdom of righteousness. So this, this has all been written. And there's nothing that anyone can do to stop it, man. So you might as well just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just let it happen, man. Like breathing, just breathe. You know, like um, Morpheus said to Neo in the Matrix when he started bugging out because he opened. You know, he, he broke it, he woke him up to the what's really going on. And Neo started bugging out and choking. He said, "Breathe, Neo. Just breathe." <laughs> you know, breathe. Okay, which which that's spiritual because uh, uh, you know breathing is the you know the breath represents wisdom understanding in fact let me go into um let me go to this scrappy hair um was it six inches is it 16 i want to say 16 and 61 yep it says he made this is second edge of 16 and 61 he made man and put in the heart in the midst of the body and he gave him breath life and understanding yeah, and the spirit of the almighty power, Yahweh, which made all things and searched about all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. So you see that? The breath is the understanding, man. Breathe, you know, just breathe, you know. And there's more scriptures that goes into the breath. You can go into, um, you know, what was it? Um, what was it? Uh, Ezekiel 37. Can these bones live the dry bones in the valley? And you got uh, Revelation 11 and 11 on down. <clears throat> Life entered into us, you know, and stood upon our feet. Exceeding great army, you know, this is, you know, us being enlightened with this wisdom. Okay. So let's go back to Revelation 5 and, um, and, and 3. It says that no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book. Neither looked thereon, so no one's pioneered that yet. And I wept much because no man was found worthy, right? In other words, to pioneer, okay, and and to read, and to read the book. Neither looked thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, "Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Yahweh, the the root of uh, David, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof." All right, meaning to get that understanding. And I beheld. And or to, to unleash the understanding. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and the and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Yahweh sent forth into all the earth. And here we have it today. That's why the scripture says that the gospel of this kingdom shall be preached throughout all the world, and then shall the end come, because now we have the complete you know, a uh, hundred percent understanding. You know what we've been taught by our beloved and el uh, elders and apostles. You know we believe that, okay. But Yahweh Shai was worthy, and he was able to pioneer that, all right, and 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 loose the seals and give us that understanding. Um, and Yahweh Shai is the Lamb. You you know you read that in John one and thirty six or John one and twenty nine, where John the Baptist saw Yahweh Shai come into him and he said, "Behold, the Lamb of God." All right, or ye, Lamb of Yahweh. Okay, so um, let's go back to Hebrews 12 and 2. It says, looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author <clears throat> and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, 
<clears throat> you know, the joy that was set before him, man. And that's a good, that's an interesting point. The joy that's set, what's the joy that's set before us, man? Um, immortality, pleasures evermore, out of the Lord's right hand. Um, the Lord wiping away tears from our eyes, the kingdom of righteousness, you know, but nothing that comes easy is, you know, is worth fighting for. So we got to fight for it. Don't want the scripture to speak about contending, which we're going to get that scripture too. All right. This is endured the cross, despising the shame. Yeah, we're going to be shamed for this. Yeah, didn't Yahweh yeah, should I say, um, you know, if they if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. You know, there's people that just don't, you know, they can't, they see us, it's like they just smoke. You know, they like a, they just smell a rotting corpse. Yeah, they turn their nose up at us. They look at us. You know, so, you know, most people they hate us, but some people they might stop and stare because they see the light that's on us. Because the scriptures speak about wisdom make it for man's face to shine. You know what I'm saying? So some people they get startled at brothers. We've seen it countless amounts of times. Or sometimes you might get bad service in a store. You go in there, and the person's being an absolute demon for no reason. Well, it's really because they got demons on them. All right, and the spirit of the Lord is on you. All right, so these things are going to happen to us, man. You know, we're going to be tried, you know, um, while we're in this flesh, you know. And this is, that's another reason why we need to be changed so that we can completely conquer the flesh. And Yahweh Shai is going to allow us to do that, you know, especially when he, um, you know, when he changes us. But it comes now in the form of the power of understanding this word, you know, being able to believe in this word, which is Yahweh Shai, follow after him. You know, in his example and try our best, you know, to straight stay on that straight and narrow path. Okay? And it's not easy, but hey, nothing that comes easy is worth fighting for. So we have to keep fighting. You know what I'm saying? Like demons coming out of nowhere, things mess, you know, you ain't getting paid right from work, or you get you might lose your job, or demons in your household. The scripture said that a man's foes shall be there of his own household. So these things, you know, the scriptures set up are set up to actually comfort us, man, through any distress that we go through in life, you know, any stressful situation that presents itself to us, we've got the scriptures as a crutch, you know, to lean upon, you know. Didn't Yahweh Shai say, my burden is light? Okay, let me see if I can get that. Uh, my burden is light. Yeah, Matthew 11 and 30. You know, I, ain't, I, ain't, I know this is a spirit because I ain't read these scriptures in a long time. All right, this is Matthew chapter 11 and uh, 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And, and is this not, you know, a laborsome work, you know, doing these videos and, you know, fighting a fight of faith? Of course it is. You know, so we're laboring, man. And when, you, when you're laboring, and I know because I just moved house, you know. I just, like I've been saying in a couple of my last videos, so. You know, my, my whole body is aching. You know, that was labor some work. I mean, sweat sweat dripping from your head and you moving boxes and you delegating which box goes into what room. And especially when you've got a family, man, you know, it's, um, it's, it's laborsome, it's tiresome. Then you've got to put up, you know, you might, have, you might have children, you might have to put up beds from scratch. You've ordered beds, you've got to move heavy appliances, cookers, fridges, all kinds of stuff. And it takes men to do that, you know? Yeah, it was another thing about equality, if you, you know, if these women want equality so much, how come you ain't seeing, you know, a bunch of women uh, with m uh, removal companies doing all the heavy lifting, all right? Because by default, you know, men are stronger than women. You know, they are known as the weaker vessel, man. But you see, Esau has given them that serpent's venom, and they've, they've, they've sipped on that, you know, feminism, and, you know, who run the world, that Beyonce type of spirit, you know? Which is completely, that's witchcraft, that's out of order. But the Lord said that, 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 again, that's biblical prophecy. A woman shall compass a man. They think that they can do bad by themselves. But the, the heavy labor that I was involved in with this week alone. And it was a spirit how the Lord aligned it properly because I was, I booked holiday from work. You know, around this time period. And um, the time of the move, of the move uh, fell, you know, um, uh, uh, perfectly on my, the day that I booked off. So that was spiritual. But it says, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And so that was heavy work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like lifting heavy appliances. You know, like I said, my body aching, you know, from, from the neck all the way down to my, my, my ankles, man. I'm, I'm aching, you know. And I will give you rest. So 
<clears throat> we're doing the labour of this work, man. Like, this is laboursome, you know. You know, fighting these demonic battles and even just being in the flesh and you trying to be in the spirit. You know, that's that's laboursome, you know. It says, take... Is it, and the Lord said, I will give you rest. So that's the comfort that's, that's set up before us, man. You know what I mean? You know, the joy that's set before us. The Lord's going to give us rest. We spoke about that. In fact, the scriptures speak about that in Revelation 21, I think. Four, the Lord said, wipe away all tears from our eyes, you know? It says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye, so Yahweh Shai said, I'm meek and lowly in heart. So we're supposed to take our yoke and learn of him. You know what I'm saying? You got guys out there that want to exalt themselves. They want to, they want to act like they're, you know, they're over the over Yahweh Shai, man. <clears throat> you know, here it is. Yahweh Shai ain't even got his glory on the earth, but you got guys in the flesh that are glorying. You know, in this wicked, filthy flesh, it don't make no sense. That's not very me. You running around glorying in this weak ass flesh. That means that you're glorying in wickedness, man. You know, because we ain't changed yet, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're still, man. Like the scriptures speak about Jacob, thou worm. We're just worms. I mean, what, what sense does it make for a worm to glory, man? Well, it's just a worm wiggling in the soil, man. Can't help itself. Just all it can do is wiggle around. You know? Might get run over by a, a bike tire. <laughs> Might get um, cooked in a hot sun. Might get picked up and just place somebody somewhere else. Helpless. Worms are just worms, man. It says, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find a rest unto your soul. So this, this word, man, is, com is the comforter, man. There's a spirit that comes with this word, the understanding that comforts us. Okay? For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Yeah? So the Lord said, my yoke's easy, man. So we just got to, you know, you know, this is our spiritual crutch, you know? The Lord said, his burden's easy, and his yoke is light. So just cast your burdens upon the Lord. Because Yahweh Shai already finished this, man. He already pioneered this journey. Okay? And he, there's no one that suffered more or is going to suffer more than Yahweh Shai suffered. And that's a fact. Because the scripture says in Isaiah 53 that his visage was marred more than any man. So Yahweh Shai, he's pioneered that. All right? Um, in terms of great levels of suffering, he's pioneered that. Okay? But also he's pioneered the uh, the reward too, okay? And he's set up to receive his kingdom on the earth very, very soon. And we see the signs of his return. Earthquakes, rumors of wars, uh, pestilences, all these things that are happening, you know? Yahweh is going to come and put an end to this man's kingdom. And when I say this man, I'm talking about the wicked. Okay? So let's... um. <clears throat> Let's keep going in Hebrews 12 and, um, and 2. This is looking unto Yahweh Shia, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. Stephen saw that before he got stoned. All right, and he saw, um, you know, or as he got stoned, he saw Yahweh Shia on the right hand side of Yahweh. And we just read that in Revelation the fifth chapter. The lamb stood before the the lamb that stood before the throne as it had been slain. That's talking about Yahweh Shai. Okay, so you know he he um and the scripture says he endured the cross. The scripture says there's another scripture that says he it was obedient even unto the death of the cross, man. Okay, so that was a great level of suffering that Yahweh Shai went through, and he's gonna get his revenge for those that pierced him. Okay, scriptures tell you that in Revelation 1 and 7, which proves reincarnation is biblical. But the point is, Yahweh Shai, now he sat down on the right hand of the throne of Yahweh, man. That's beautiful. Okay, the joy that's set before us, man. All right, and we want to sit on, on Yahweh Shai's right hand, you know what I'm saying? We want to, you know, see, this is what we, this is where we you know, that's where we want to be, you know, okay? When your Lord comes back, you know, we want him to look at us as faithful servants, man. We done his will. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is um enjoyed the cross, yep. So he enjoyed the cross. I was just thinking of that um that scripture that I was gonna get out now. 
Now, I don't want to get that yet. I want to get Timothy first. Because it's talking about endurance. So let's, let's stick on that spirit of enduring. This is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai. So we're soldiers of Yahweh Shai, man. You know? That's exactly what we are. We got it. And we've been we've been ordered, you know, by our king, you know, to um to endure. You know, endure hardness. <laughs> and that's it, that's an order. So this is a spiritual army that we're involved in. When we've been given an order. Alright, it says no man that warreth, alright, that's why I said this is a spiritual army. Uh, you know, when you're at war, you have troops. Okay. Um and we're a spiritual army. So we're involved in a spiritual war here. Alright. It's a spiritual war. Remember the scriptures tell us in Ephesians 6. See this is what I'm saying. Another thing. If you're carnal. You ain't going to understand. Ephesians the 6th chapter. Going into what we wrestle. Not against flesh and blood. But against principalities man. You know, you ain't going to understand them things. You just going to think that. We're just chatting out of our ass. But. You know. There are things that are happening. And people got spirits on them. There's demons messing with people. There's demons messing with us. But the difference is, we're protected by the hedge of angels, uh, for, uh, Psalms 34 and 7. And through the power of prayer, man, you know, Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, praying in those names, you know, we um, we become strengthened, you know, to endure, you know, the um, the struggles uh, of, of spiritual assaults that we go through, you know. It's because the Lord gave us his name to call upon, man. Don't the scriptures say, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous runneth into it and are safe. So, so there you go. That's 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 medicine right there. You know the the ability to call upon the name of Yahweh Shai, man. Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. It says, "No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may." So, no matter what happens, man, like we can't put anything in our personal lives, you know, above this truth, because ultimately we're going through what we're going through in our personal lives. Whether it be good or bad, we're going for it because we're on this walk, because of the truth, because we're, you know, we're set up to endure hardness. Now, the Lord is a power of balance. So, hey, you know, false balance is an abomination. So sometimes you might be up, sometimes you might get brought down really low, you know, but that's the balance. That's the, you know, that in this truth, that's what it is. And no matter what, through the roller coaster of this truth, man, that we, that we're on. You know, the ups and downs, the twists and turns, the loops, you know, um, we still have to put this word first. All right. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. So don't be getting entangled. You know. It's funny because, you know, I was putting some solar lights, um, you know, on my balcony. I was I was uh, I bought some solar lights so you can see, you know, when it gets dark, you might just want to just chill. You know, you might just want to just chill outside, but you need a source of light. So I said to myself, well, let me get some solar lights. They were pretty cheap. Pick them up, open the box, and all the, all, the, all the bulbs were tangled. And it took me at least 40 minutes to untangle and unravel that, you know. So being entangled with the affairs of this life, you know, being entangled, is very annoying. And it's very, very hard to undo, you know, getting entangled, you know. Like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, let's give an example. You, you know, walking down the street and you, you walk into a spider's web or something. You you know, you just, and you're trying to figure out where the strands of web are. And you're trying to get it out of your hair, get it off your face, a bit, you know, past your earlobe. And you're just entangled. And it's, and it's, it's annoying and it's troublesome, is it not? So we can't be entangled with the affairs of this life, man. You know what I'm saying? Because there are, you know, there are webs set up to, to get you entangled. But that's why we've got to constantly fight to be in the spirit, man. So that we don't get entangled with the affairs of this life. This is about keeping our eyes single. Knowing, you know, staying on a path, man. You veer off the path. You go left off the path. Now you're definitely going to get entangled. Okay? But the scripture says a righteous man falleth seven times and getteth back up. So you might, you know, sometimes you might slip. But yeah, you got to get back up. You got to get on that path, man. It says that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. So we've been chosen to be soldiers. Well, we've been called <clears throat> to do a service. We hope that we've been chosen. Okay. 
And let's go to my next scripture. This is uh, Colossians. And these are just going to close up on some closing scriptures here. Um, and I pray this is edifying. Put on the new self as a subheading goes. If you then be, it's a Colossians 3 and 1. If you then be risen with Hamashiach, seek those things which are above. You know, where Hamashiach sitteth on the right hand of the power of Yahweh. Constantly, these scriptures are talking about the right hand. Yahweh Shai sitting on the right hand. You know? So, Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, he told us what to do, you know, in order to make it, you know, the joy that's been set before him, you know? He did He did it. He pioneered it. Okay? So, why would you not follow, follow after the pioneer? He told you this is the way. And there is no other way, man. All right? There ain't no, you can't reinvent the wheel out here. Yahweh Shai has already pioneered it, man. He's already done it. The author and finisher of our faith. Okay? <clears throat> like, you know, like, um, you know, uh, let's say, for example, Christopher Columbus or Christopher Colón, or he so-called discovered the new world. No, the 10 tribes, they were already over there. All right? The, the, uh, the northern tribes, they were already over there, man. Okay, so how could he discover something, you know, that was already discovered? It was already pioneered. Okay, that's why he brought Hebrew interpreters with him. I think one of their names was Louis de Torres, that he brought with him on a ship. He was a Hebrew interpreter, he spoke different languages. He, he spoke Hebrew too. You can even look that up on Google. Okay, so when someone pioneers something, here you are, you, you Johnny come lately, you trying to reinvent the wheel, and you trying to re-pioneer what's been pioneered. That doesn't exist. You can't re-pioneer what's already been pioneered. Okay, because we looked up the definition of pioneer, and what did it say? It says a person who is among the first to explore or settle in a new country or area, the first, right, to use or apply a new method or area of knowledge or activity. The first, you know what I'm saying? That's your Howard Shai, man, author and finisher of our faith. Okay. It says, set your affections on the things above, nor things on the earth. So that's what we do. We've got to set our affections on the things above, man. All right? Not looking, you know, at this, this, um, <laughs> you know, and starry-eyed at this world, man. I mean, you look at Diddy, man. Look at Michael Jackson. Look at Prince. You know, look at these, these celebrities that have sold out for corruptible crowns, which was their lot. That's their lot to do that. Okay, but they end up feeling, you know, they're going to be very ashamed. You know, I mean, Diddy, he's getting his names being dragged through the through the mud, you know, um, you know, repeatedly. OK, so this this shows you, man, like, hey, the bigger you, you are in this kingdom, the more of a demon you, you, you must be, you know, because this is the kingdom of the wicked. So in order for you to excel in the kingdom of the wicked, then how wicked, you, you got to merge with that wickedness, you got to merge with the darkness, you know, and the scriptures speak about that, these men love darkness, let me get um, uh, John uh, 3 and 19, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil, and it's spiritual man, because I saw, uh, did he, he came over to the UK, and I actually saw him driving down the street. I see him driving. He was in the back of his Rolls Royce. It was like a black and orange one. And I see him driving down, you know, driving down the, the, the you know, the streets of London. And we locked eyes for a minute. I see him. But then he, he kind of turned away. And I was like, shit, is that Diddy? I'm sure that was Diddy. So I tried to, you know, you know, sometimes you gather your senses. So I tried to, he got stopped in the lights. So I tried to kind of like, um... <laughs> I mean, this is just what I'm like, man. You know, whether it was right or wrong, whatever. I tried to run after the Rolls Royce and that because I was going to go and, yo, Diddy, man, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you know, the spirit didn't have it. Spirit, the light went green and I couldn't make it. You know, the light, you know, the Rolls Royce kept moving up the street. But the point is, I see him. And I told the brother that I seen him, you know. And all of a sudden, like, I think, what, it wasn't it a few months later, all this stuff started coming out. About Diddy, man, I mean, he's getting, you know, he's getting, you know, getting sued, you know, you, you know, all this stuff's coming out about him, man. how he abuses and molests and sexually assaults and all kinds of stuff, you know. 
But these, the point is, you know, he had a dark countenance. And these, these people are dark, man. They love darkness rather than light. You know, these people that want to excel in the kingdom of the wicked, you got to really be dark, you know, in order to get up the chain. You know? It says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So this light is this truth, man. The scripture says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So we've got a duty, man, to shine this light. It's as simple as that. You know? We have a duty to shine the light in this dark realm. Okay? So that's what we've got to put at the forefront of our mission. All right? Is to, is to shine that light. Okay? And follow the Lamb. Because Yahweh Shai, you know, he went about this world, man. Yahweh Shai said, if this was my kingdom, then would my servants fight. You know what I'm saying? So... This kingdom, man, this ain't shit, man. We're waiting for a new... Well, let's close out on that scripture. All right? Since we're um, meditating on the joy that's set before us, let's let's get Second Peter 3 and, um, and, um, and 12. Looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of Yahweh, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. You know, I so said that's what we're supposed to be looking for, you know, for this thermonuclear destruction to come and, you know, put an end to our misery and suffering in this flesh, you know, put an end to us having to wake up in the kingdom of the wicked, the kingdom, this dark realm, you know what I'm saying? We want to be out of here. Okay, we want, we want to change, you know, nevertheless, we according to his promise, see, that's the joy that's set before us, right? Look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, man. You see that? Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent. Look at that. Be diligent that ye may be... And wasn't Yahweh Shai diligent in doing the will of the Father? Yes, he pioneered that, you know? So Yahweh Shai showed us the way. Okay, be diligent, right? That ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. All right, so there you go. And that word new heavens and new earth, the word new is kainos, which means refreshed. So Yahweh Shai, man, he's going to come and set, he's going to set the righteous pace on the earth, man. And that's what we can't wait for. And waking up into a kingdom of, you know, righteousness and light rather than darkness, man. You know? This fucking hellhole. Anyway, so with that, man, I pray this is edifying, you know, that, I believe I got the scriptures that I wanted to, um, you know, wanted to get. There was another one in Matthew 19, which I could just quickly read that one off. And this is what Yahweh Shai was asked by Peter. And then he said, um, verse 27 in Matthew 19, right? Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? All right. So this is about forsaking everything that we have. To follow after Yahweh Shai, the pioneer. Yahweh Shai, the pioneer. Alright? And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, That ye which have followed me. You see that? So this is about following Yahweh Shai, the pioneer. Because he's going first. He's leading the pack. Okay? He's the author. Okay? He's up. He's in the lead. Okay? That ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Yasharala. And every one that have forsaken houses or brethren, or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Come on, man immortality man now that beats a corruptible crown doesn't it all right striving for an immortal crown striving for immortality striving for a hundredfold in the kingdom man but many that are first shall be the last and the last shall be first you got guys that are impatient you know they don't want to suffer they want to live it up in the kingdom of wicked see that's 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 a really low you know they don't want to suffer in righteousness so they'd rather live it live it up in wickedness they've traded in an incorruptible crown for a corruptible well really they, they were never even given that opportunity because guess what they're of the 
They're of the wicked. All right, the two thirds in America, they're going to be destroyed. That's just their lot. See, we've been called. We hope that we've been chosen. That's the difference. But the scripture says, many are called, many that are first shall be the last. So yeah, they're, they're living it up now, but guess what? They're going to be last, man. It's better to suffer now, you know what I'm saying? So that we may, you know, the joy that, for the joy that's set before us, because the Lord told us, look, we're going to inherit everlasting life and receive a hundredfold for everything that we forsake on this side. Now that takes a great level. And even just thinking about that, the gravity of that, verse alone takes great faith you know to, to put that in the forefront of your mind as you suffer in the flesh for something that you don't have yet all right but with patience which patience means to suffer you know the scripture says in your patience possess you your souls even though you're suffering you're still being diligent in something that you can't yet see i mean that takes faith man you know so this is why we gotta keep going man you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakhakwadash. I pray this video was edifying. You know, Shalom to the hopeful elect.